On a small family farm, tucked away into the countryside, a love story is finally blossoming between two best friends. Of course, this is just any farm. It's full of dozens of Dalmatians, alien treasure, and has a long legacy of family seeped in unexpected drama. The journey to a legacy of 101 Dalmatians has been full of more twists, turns, and trials than anyone could have ever predicted. And these aren't any two best friends. This is Terry Radcliffe Dearly, the only remaining son of Roger and Anita Radcliffe Dearly, and Tisha Tavares, a neglected child who grew up to protect and lead the orphaned Radcliffe Dearly children back into becoming a family. And here, on this small family farm that has seen a generation of drama, loss, and love, and the birth of many, many Dalmatians, a new chapter is finally ready to begin. And with that, everyone, welcome back to the 101 Dalmatians Challenge, the official start of Generation 2. Oh my goodness, it has been too long, too long since we have actually spent time with this challenge and this this entire family. I can't believe we're amongst the, like, like the swing sets where the children grew up. There are the bees still buzzing. Look, and we have our little Dalmatian babies. Oh, we had a brand new litter with Nessa last time, didn't we? Oh my gosh, that looked like a kitten, but it's actually a puppy running past. Oh, they're so cute. They're so cute. Oh no, oh no, oh, you guys. Oh, already this has become immensely cuter than I even remember, and we literally just got here. Holy cow. But welcome everyone. So if you are new, this is the 101 Dalmatians challenge. And we actually had many amazing, amazing episodes of this challenge in the past. I am so excited to try to bring it up back and to return to the adventures here. Look at how cute they are. Look at our little pups. Also apologies, I'm still learning how to control everything again, because this is also going to be our experiment in returning to The Sims 3 and seeing how it runs on my new computer and if it might be kind enough to let us explore a whole bunch of the fantastic legacies that we could create here in The Sims 3 and check in on some of our most popular series like this particular one with our mini Dalmatians that we have born here on the Radcliffe Dearly Farm and also our Warrior Cat series which is a huge fantastic adventure that I do want to return to but first and foremost we need to make sure that you know the sims 3 functions well and i couldn't think of a better way to go ahead and to try to re-explore the game than visiting with the radcliffe dearly family so oh my gosh i'm gonna do a quick overview of who the family is and what the farm is all about for those of you who may be new also never fear if you want to catch up because it's one of the most dramatic and amazing stories we have ever had on the radcliffe dearly's legacy uh, and check out the first playlist. It's got lots of episodes for you to enjoy during this downtime. And you can also see as Pongo and Perdita, who we do actually still have over here, uh, went ahead and started the family. I'll be able to show you guys how, where's Perdita? Old girl Perdita, there she is. There's our old girl, look at her. Perdita is now an elder. She has had many, many puppies and she is still watching over the family that the founding members of the Radcliffe Dearly family, Anita and Roger, left behind. Because yes, guys, although Pongo and Perdita are still with us, Anita and Roger, their original owners and the generation one parents of the, the kids here, are no longer with us. I'm afraid that you are looking at a pair of orphans with Terry, who's in the kitchen right now, hanging out with his new fiance, Tisha. Terry 
and Emma being the last of the Radcliffe Dearly family members who are still here. And this is quite a tragedy because they have many siblings, but not one of those siblings is still here on the family farm. In fact, if you would be so kind, Emma, who is one of the youngest members, could you show us the family tree? Even the family tree has been chopped, you guys. So Roger and Anita met quite some time ago, and Roger Radcliffe Dearly started the 101 Dalmatians Challenge with Pongo. And shortly after he joined this beautiful world of uh, the Meadow Farms area, he met Anita. So Anita, who's right over here, a very happy, nurturing dog person, family-oriented bookworm who was neat, really always dreamed of having a big family. And with Roger dreaming about having a big farm, the two of them clearly were meant to be together. They fell in love, their Dalmatians, Pongo and Perdita, ended up falling in love. The two bought a farm that we are currently now at, and they had many children, many, many children, beginning with Meredith, their eldest oldest child uh, who actually ended up having quite the dramatic child like childhood we'll talk more about her in a second but Meredith was born followed by Terry followed by uh, let's see where is there's Emma but Emma is actually one of the youngest ones we have um, Andrea and Andrea is currently not listed because of a glitch in The Sims 3 don't worry about it but we do have Andrea and Andrea is going to be showing up in The Sims 4 for a crossover series pretty soon. So keep your eyes out for her. You're going to see a lot of the uh, many members of the Radcliffe Dearly family popping up everywhere, not just here on the family farm. But anyway, clearly Roger and Anita had a whole kitten caboodle of kids. And why are there, you know, only a couple of them here? Who is Tisha? What happened to Roger and Anita? Well, my friends, it's a story of tragedy that I will sum up very quickly as we stare deeply into Emma's eyes. Because you see, Emma here wants to become a detective and she wants to find out what really happened to her parents. Where did they really go? Where is her long lost sister, Lyra? Bearing in mind, of course, that Lyra is her, you know, half alien sister, but we'll talk about that in a second too. <laughs> all right, I can't summarize all of the amazing things that happened with the whole series. But I'll just let you guys know, our founding generation, Roger and Anita, disappeared one night when they went off on a vacation together. They, and this all happened naturally in the game. We wove it together out of the dramatic chaos that occurred to us. But Roger and Anita had their six children. They had, uh, let's see, they had Meredith, they had Terry, they had Andrea, who will just pretend her picture's over here. I'm sure that, you know, clearly Emma could just draw a little picture for us. Then they had Emma, and while Anita was pregnant with Emma, Roger actually got abducted, and he ended up becoming pregnant with Lyra. So they ended up having babies at the same time. <laughs> I know, it's a little interesting. But Emma and Lyra, who are half-sisters, and born to, you know, Anita and Roger, respectively, ended up growing up basically like twins, and they are super close. And Lyra, and actually, we'll come back to what happened to Lyra in just a second, uh, but after Lyra was born, Roger and Anita wanted just one more child, so they ended up having young Tobias. And right after they had Tobias, they thought, you know, this is a lot of kids. Having six kids really is quite the handful. So let's go ahead and go on vacation. So Roger and Anita went on a vacation and they never came back. They actually disappeared on me completely, vanished, just poof, they were gone. And just like that, because of some glitch in The Sims 3 that we decided to roll with for the roleplay of it, we had six orphans out of the blue. And so Meredith, as the eldest, was left trying to help hold the family together, but she really just felt bitter and confused and didn't want to try to run the farm. Terry wanted to try to keep the farm together and keep all the kids together, and the other kids wanted to stay together too. And for a long time, they were able to stay together thanks to the amazing grace of Tisha. So Tisha is actually a fantastic, amazing person with a heart of gold. Right over here, she's over just looking for some nice books in the family bookshelf. 
But Tisha was invited into the family when she was a young girl to help babysit everybody. And it was a great job for Tisha because she's actually from a very, very chaotic family. And she was heavily neglected when she was a young girl. So her parents, Alicia, and Chance are NPC townies who, because of our story progression it, mod, ended up having a lot of kids and a lot of drama all on their own. And they were constantly fighting, like really bad fighting. And it got to the point where we actually invited Tisha when she became a teenager to move in as our nanny to get away from all of this chaos that her parents were causing. So Tisha had moved in right before Roger and Anita went away to help raise little Tobias. And when Roger and Anita vanished, Tisha has done everything she could to be able to keep the family together. So even though she was a teenager, even though she had no good role models or examples to follow, also apologies as I figure out how to use the controls in Sims 3 again, but even though she had no good role models to follow, even though she was just a teenager herself, our girl Tisha here held the family together through sheer will. And it worked for a long time until tragedy struck once more. And unfortunately, the alien mother of Lyra actually showed up to check in on seeing how her half-breed kid was doing on Earth. And to her shock, you know, Lyra was an orphan. And the two very functional human parents who she had left her half-daughter with, uh, or her daughter with, had vanished and that wasn't part of the deal she thought this was a perfectly good like suas is lyra's mother her alien mother and suas thought that this was a perfectly wonderful uh potential place to leave lyra also ignore the relationship that lyra is in because that doesn't that doesn't exist cover that up that's just the story progression taking her away from me we'll fix it but Suas thought that, you know, she left Lyra in a good human nest because there were clearly lots of kids here. Roger and Anita could go ahead and raise her, you know, requisite child that the alien council said she had to have. And then she comes back and Suas finds that Roger and Anita are gone and it's a bunch of teenagers trying to take care of each other. And even though they were doing so really, really wonderfully, that was too much for Suas. So she stole Lyra away into space and took her back to be raised in alien society instead. A fact that devastated Emma to be torn from the twin of her heart and has shattered the family. That was really when the pieces started crumbling. And after that, well, Meredith, who's also not actually in a relationship, ignore that, story progression, doing the wrong thing again. Meredith, the eldest of the child, the eldest of all the children, who you think would be the most responsible, decided that enough was enough and she actually ran away to become a famous actress in a big city. That was her dream. And the thing was, she had been fighting with all of the other family members except for the toddler, Tobias. And so Meredith decided she could do better for Tobias than anybody else. And she kidnapped the toddler, Tobias, and took him away to the big city with her, where she will one day potentially show up with our Get Famous adventures in The Sims 4, trying to raise her toddler little brother on her own and entering a life of stardom. So we're gonna be seeing her in the future too, but that was another step that shattered the family. And then finally, just natural progression of everyone growing up did it because eventually, Andrea was finally ready to leave the nest and Andrea aged up into a young adult and she actually wanted to go to art school. So Terry and Tisha for a while there actually got lost in, um, in a special Arctic world adventure we were doing with the two of them. Uh, oh, he's in the bathroom. Sorry about that, Terry. But Terry and Tisha escorted Andrea to art school where hopefully we will see her in a cool Sims 4 crossover that we're going to have uh, in university in the near future. And the house became rather empty. The only child left other than Terry, who is now the official heir to the entire Radcliffe Dearly estate, is Emma, who wants to grow up and become a international super spy so that she can find out what has happened to her whole family. They have all vanished on her, very rudely, she might add, and they have made it very difficult for her to be able to figure out where they have scattered to the wind. And she wants to be able to keep tabs on her family and figure out where 
her sister Lyra has gone to. And what better way to see what the aliens are up to than to become a super spy? So that's where we're at there. And Emma's adventure is going to take us into an interesting side story. But all of that aside, the whole point of the 101 Dalmatians challenge is the Dalmatians. Is actually taking good care of all of our Dalmatians and trying to get to 101 babies born. So that is where Terry, pardon me, Terry, you're in the restroom, and Tisha are actually going to take over. They are going to start taking care of these 101 Dalmatians, and they are hopefully going to get to the point where we can breed up even more of the puppies, and we can watch as that family line evolves over time and adds even more little tiny cuties into the family tree. <gasps> like, look at Pongo playing with his grandbaby over here. Oh, Pongo, that was so precious. Do it again. Do it again, Pongo. What does he want to do? Oh, he's goofing around. He is goofing around with the little puppy. He's waiting for the little guy to get going. That's so cute. But Pongo and Pranita have also had a very prolific puppy family. They did a great job of producing many, many pups. Ta-da! To the point where if you add up all of the Dalmatians that we have actually had following these two and then this family line with Basil, who was voted as the Generation 2 heir of our Dalmatians, we have had 30 Dalmatians all together through the family line. 30! Don't count all these guys. They're, they're not the Dalmatians that belong to us. But we are already 30%, well, kind of, because we need 101. About 30% of the way done with the challenge, and that is where we are starting off Generation 2. We have a wonderful farm, we have a lot of money, we actually have a way to make a ton of money off the dogs because we happen to sell our dogs to aliens for a lot of money. Um, a long story short, that's one of the legacies that Roger actually left behind is his contacts with aliens. If Terry decides to honor that or not, we'll have to see. I think that he might feel a little bit bitter towards the aliens since, you know, not alien, all aliens are the same, but he did lose his sister Lyra to Suas, like breaking their business deals and taking her. Again, would really help to see the first season if you want to catch up like with all the details. Do I have any Tiberium? But basically the way that the family has historically made so much money off of the puppies is when the puppies grow up, we're allowed to sell one Tiberium and say that that is the, the money that the aliens give us. And Tiberiums are worth like 36000 for this one alone. So it's definitely worth it. But we'll kind of play around with that in the future. Because I don't know if Terry would want to continue to honor that business still. Because he actually would love to become a firefighter. So that's where our Generation 2 begins. We have 30 of the 101 Dalmatians done. We have two farm-loving heirs who want to take over the farm with Terry and Tisha who are deeply in love and want to get married and start a big family of their own to replace the family they have lost. And we have got already a ton of puppies! We actually just had Basil, Generation 2 heir, who is really amazing with his glorious spots right over here. And his mate, Nissa, have their second litter. And you guys may be wondering, what is it about Nissa? Like, she looks really weird. Why? And we actually worked with some of the aliens to, like, genetically modify her a little bit. And that is why she looks like this. She's kind of like a iridescent spotted Dalmatian. Very, very cool. Unfortunately, the genetic tweaking did mean that she inherited a skittish personality. But I'm pretty content with, uh, with Nissa's overall look. I really love it. And she has had some healthy puppies that turned out really amazing. So this is their second litter of puppies. And this is where we're going to begin. You guys helping me name our newest additions to the family, who were born while Terry and Tisha were coming back from their adventures of taking Andrea off to her new art school. Oh, and again, apologies, I'm still figuring out how to control Sims 3 again, but the more support we can get on our Sims 3 series, the sooner we will see our Warrior Cat series come back. Plus, I just want to see these puppies again. They're so freaking cute. Look at this little one. So, as you can tell, our puppies here on the Radcliffe Dearly Farm are extremely, amazingly, amazingly patterned. Here we have a mostly all brown Dalmatian 
who has a whole bunch of green and purple spots all over its body, which is just so freaking cute. And we're going to need names for these three, so I hope you guys can help me name this little boy who is playful and friendly, and honestly, I'm kind of tempted to think about him as a potential Generation 4 heir, or no, he would be Generation 3 heir of the Dalmatian lines, because that would be really adorable. And then we have this little puppy right over here, who, let me see if it will hold still long enough for me to be able to find it. Hi, little guy. Okay, you're gonna have to hold still for just a second, because I'm still, I've got my wobbly, like, sea legs on when it comes to driving in The Sims 3 still, but we'll get there eventually. We'll set, like, tweak some settings and get going. <gasps> Look at this little guy! All right, guys, names, names, names. We need name suggestions for this little one, because one of the most important things we can do to restore what has been lost on the Radcliffe Dearly Farm are to see the pitter-patter of more little puppy feet, to get the family animal shelter up and going, which is emptied out while Terry and Tisha were gone for so long, taking Andrea to her art college. Uh, and this is a hyper-playful little puppy, and hopefully having babies with Terry and Tisha too. Imagine Generation 3 babies! Ah! That'd make me so happy. So this is another little boy. He's hyper and playful. Mostly a normal Dalmatian with some of those really, really fun spots. Blue and purple spots really lightly on the body. And then finally, our only little girl who is an adventurous hunter. <gasps> Hello, little one! And sure enough, she has followed the other Dalmatians in to look in Tisha's room at the bird in here. And let's get a good look at her. Whoops, sorry guys. That's a good look at the sky. I feel like I, I have sea legs when it comes to trying to figure out what I'm doing. Oh, and she's actually really cute, you guys. I love her. She has got purple, blue, brown, and green spots. And she has got really adorable little ears. Oh, I love how the patterns work in The Sims 3 so much. And she is our female adventurous hunter. So we need some names for her as well. But alright, I think everything seems to be okay. No unexpected crashing. I feel like, I, like I'm taking the temperature for the Radcliffe Dearlies. I need to tweak the camera settings a little bit so I can get around a bit easier. And meanwhile, Terry and Tisha are having a conversation in the barn bathroom. Huh. Probably because Tisha, Tisha loves to keep everything tidy. But we'll go over taking care of the dogs. In fact, I see that Basil actually needs a bath, so we'll let Tisha go ahead and bathe him. She's very responsible like that. Oh, the puppies are so cute! And we'll go over what Terry and Tisha want out of their future next time. And next time we'll also talk about this thing! This is actually the Animal Rescue Center. It's huge. We have a lot of stuff to do at the Animal Rescue Center, trust me. It's got a barn, it's got gigantic rooms where we are going to be installing all sorts of small animals and small pets. Um, yeah, it's going to be filled up quite a bit. Ooh, do we already have some fish in here? Oh, we've got some fish in here! What the heck? Oh my goodness, I didn't even know that we put fish in here. We're going to have to come and see what kind of fish these are. Wow, they've been breeding while we've been gone too. But yeah, we've got a lot we're going to cover, including coming on over here and trying to make a wonderful memoriam for all of the animals to make sure that we have, you know, there's Pongo and Perdita, and we want to make sure that we're honoring the different generations of Dalmatians as we have them. So this is going to be our Dalmatian showroom where, you know, we show off how high quality our Dalmatian line is. We've got a training area for the animals that we rescue. We will eventually be running a rescue center. That's one of Tisha's dreams. And we have got a gigantic barn where we will be able to house any of the rescue horses, which we do occasionally get in the course of Tisha's dreams to become an animal rescuer. So I know that she's really excited about that. I'm really excited to return to it. But we're going to have to take things one step at a time because diving back in, oh, what's she doing? Oh, she wants to try to bond with Emma! Oh gosh, we are going to have to take things one step at a time, because there is actually a lot to do to get the farm up and going again, and to get the family, hopefully, flourishing again. So thank you guys so much for joining me. If you could, do please leave a like for all of our adorable puppies, who are up to so many little random things. What are you doing, Nissa? Why are you so worried about things? 
<laughs> and if you would like to join us on this and literally thousands more adventures, do please consider subscribing. But most importantly, my friends, stay curious. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.